Fish on Fridays. I'm Al McCauley. And in the past, I've done episodes about great Irish saints. St. Patrick, of course, Bridget of Kildare, St. Fiacra, St. Dymphna, just to name a few. And you can check all those out in our archives. Today, I want to do another episode about a great Irish saint, a guy named Brendan the Navigator. Now, he was a 6th century monk who was born in the extreme southwest part of the island of Ireland in a place called the Dingle Peninsula. And what a great guy. He was He was incredibly charismatic, a born leader. He was somebody who had uh, was considered very courageous and brave. And he had that great Irish wit, that great Irish charm that just drew people to him. And he was a, a really strong believer in Christ and in spreading the gospel. In fact, his whole life was spent spreading the gospel. He was a missionary um, par excellence. Part of his, his, because of his charm and drawing people to him, he was able to establish several monasteries in Ireland. In fact, it's said that by the time he dies, he's going to have 3,000, more than 3,000 men who are going to be, serve as monks in the, con, in the, I'm sorry, in the monasteries that he started. So it's pretty remarkable. But as you can picture the island of Ireland in your mind's eye, you can see that it's not the biggest landmass. And so he felt that it wasn't enough. He had to take literally Christ's words to his disciples at the end of Matthew's gospel in chapter 28 when he says, go to the ends of the earth and spread the gospel. Brendan had to take, took that literally. And so he he got himself what's called a curac, which is a, a boat from the 6th century from his time period. It's basically a long wooden hull and it's it's put together or covered with animal skins that are tightly covered. And I, I don't know enough of the science about it, but it was able to stay in water for weeks and months at a time. And so he and other monks would venture out in a Kurok and they would go to different islands and they'd meet different people so that they could spread the gospel. In fact, it's said that he went so far as to be one of the first, if not the first, Europeans to land in what we call today the New World. Take that for what you will. But it's interesting because his journeys, many, many seafaring journeys, by the way, that's why he's called Brendan the Navigator, he wrote a book called The Navigatio. And it, what it is, is it's, a, it's filled with stories and drawings of, of his exploits. Everything from fanciful tales about running into whales, um, all kinds of different sea creatures and things of that nature. But it's interesting because this has been rewritten and it's been um, reissued in uh, illustrated versions and other things. There's over 125 different versions still available of the Navigatio still today. In fact, it was so influential it's that Christopher Columbus insisted on reading it and having it with him when he took off in his maiden voyage in 1492. And we all know how that worked out for him. Well, the question remains for us modern skeptics. Could a Kurok, could this boat be strong enough and withstand the water f to get from Ireland to the New World? And so in our own time, we, there's a man named Tim Severin who decided, it, it, I'm going to do this in 1970, 76 to 77, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he died in year 2000, but he made a replica Kurok and he, he named it, christened it, the Brendan, named after Brendan the Navigator. He, he made it exactly to the specifications of what a boat would look like in the 6th century, in the time of Brendan. He took a few other people with them and only the provisions that would have been available to Brendan at that time. Before they took off, it was said that the Bishop of Kerry blessed the boat and christened it with a bottle of Irish whiskey. <laughs> so, wished them well and off he went. And it took 13 months in 1976 to 77, but Tim Severin was able to go from Ireland to Newfoundland and back safely. So he was able to prove that it could happen, that Brendan could have done this in that boat, given the technology and what was available, available to him at the time in the 6th century. Now, it doesn't prove that he actually did it, but it does prove that it could be done. Uh, it could have been done. So just a fascinating thing to think about. But it makes me wonder, what lengths will I go to to spread the gospel? What seas will I cross? Will I, will I look at other people that need to hear the gospel? Will I act out the gospel in the way I live? Um, to people who might not have seen it or might not recognize it? Um, will, I, will I be brave in that, you know, the way he was? Can I be charismatic enough to say, hey, listen, you know, the story of Christ is a great one. You need to hear about it. Um, this is what we're all called to do. It's part of our baptismal call to, to be disciples. And that's how you make disciples. Disciples make disciples. And so we're called as disciples to go out and make others by the way we live, by the way we speak, by the way we act. And so 
Um, just something to think about, perhaps. But Brendan the Navigator, Navi Navigator. <laughs> Brendan the Navigator, what a great saint, courageous man, uh, one of those great Irishmen to, to look to and to pray with, <clears throat> uh, especially as we go about our business and navigating through our own uh, journey of life. So thanks for watching. If you'd like to share this content, that would be great. We'd love it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook. But either way, please keep tuning in every Friday for Fish on Fridays. Until next time, please be good to each other and God bless. Thank you.